of uh, our honorable Mr. Pond of Madhav Jigawane sir and uh, with the uh, inspiration of our head Dr. Rajiv Dada ma'am we have been conducting this lecture series so without spending much time between you and the audience uh, i would like to hand over the things to the anchor for going ahead pratima please uh, thank you sir now i request chandra sekar dawne sir to introduce us our resource person chandra sekar dawne sir thank you for giving me chance to introduce today's resource person first of all good morning to all and all shri shahu mahavidyalaya agronomics latu department of english organizes knowing a book lecture series lecture 4 on the famous book the good man and the sea by ernest hemingway and on this book the lecture we have arranged that is the famous renowned a popular literate dr arvind nowles i welcome you all in knowing a book lecture series i am here to introduce today's resource person dr the nowles sir this is pers- uh, this personality is known to everyone in swami ramanand tirth bharatiya university nandi jurisdiction he stands for knowledge discipline and humility dr nowles sir is presently working as associate and head department of english shivaji mahavidyalaya udgit his educational qualification is ma english phd he has huge teaching experience of more than 20 years he is ncc commission officer presently he is captain he is a uh, uh, a formal coordinator nac steering committee and iqsc he has Co-author, editor, and co in many universities, including USA, UK, South Africa, Australia, Germany, Canada, and so on. He has published uh, research papers, book articles at national, international conference uh, conferences, seminars, symposium, and uh, in many other talks. He has organized. and international workshops conferences seminars at his college he talked in many conferences as resource person and yes he contributed to curriculum development he was the board of studies member in swami ramanand tirth marathwada university and designed curriculum of ug and pg courses Sir is PhD guide, main supervisor, and ten students awarded and five students doing PhD under his guidance. Sir has completed one UGC sponsored minor research project in English. Sir completed UGC uh, up to one orientation course, four refresher course, eleven FDP and STC. So this is a brief introduction of this great academician. So. i am very uh, thankful uh, for being in this program and especially the book uh, old man and the sea is uh, very famous by ernest hemingway and uh, i would like to tell you sir this book was uh, prescribed for our third year uh, third year students the old man and the sea yeah. so thank you once again uh, for being with us sir so thank you over to you pratima thank you so much sir now without further ado i request our honorable resource person dr arvin nowle sir to take to take charge of the session thank you the chairperson of this invited lecture under the knowing a book lecture series and honorable principal of rajesh c shahu autonomous college lathur and one of my great academic friends dr mahadev ji gawani head of english department dr anuja ji jadhav the coordinator of this lecture series dr sachin bhandare my friend dr chandrashekar dawne 
रिस्ट फैकल्टीज प्रतिमा खोसे एंड रिस्ट यूजे एंड पीजी स्टूडेंट ऑफ योर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश राज्य शाहू एटम्स कॉलेज लातूर गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट द प्रिंसिपल द एच ओ डी एंड कॉर्डिनेटर फॉर दिस वंडरफुल इनिशिएटिव ऑफ लेक्चर सीरीज नोविंग अ बुक एज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ बुक्स इन आवर लाइफ के नॉट बी अंडरमाइंड फॉर द नॉट ओनली हेल्प इन ब्रॉडिंग ब्रॉडनिंग अवर हराइज बट ऑल्सो एक्ट एज टूअर वेज to connect us with the rest world around us books are synonymous with learning and education and how been a concrete source of information and knowledge for many generations books are the kind of companions who never grow old and can guide us in life's thorough journey they function as a survival kit sometimes they influence us and leave an impact on us there are numerous ways that books influence us or influence our lives they give us insight into how other people live they broaden our world view they influence our thought process they show us how to be good and better when i received the first call regarding this lecture from uh, hod dr anuja ji jadav a couple of weeks back i immediately accepted it however later on my confusion increased while selecting a book to talk on as there are many inspiring and motivating books that will help you live your best life however as my talk is intended to use in page students of english literature i thought to pick a fictional piece and my memory, my memory went 23 years back to my pg days of dayanand arts college latur where one novel was prescribed to us in our curriculum which is still my favorite book that is the old man and sea by ernest hemingway i think that the book is visible to you and as uh, chandrashekar told now that was prescribed to uh, your college uh, your terms college uh, for the last curriculum of of ug third year there is there would be no university in the world where the this book is not prescribed for ug or the pg it is one of hemingway's finest works which was cited when he won the nobel prize for literature in 1954 the old man and the sea is a literally short novel that is a novella written by him in 19 51 and published in 1952 its 3.5 5.3 billion copies were sold within 2 days of its publications it has been adopted for the screen many times in different languages and also listed on the bbc's the big read poll and 200 best loved novels the book is short read approximate 100 pages the book which i have with me it has only 113 pages and 113 pages very small that's why it's called a novella and unexplored area on the earth and this work travels deeply into the nature of this mysterious city means when we turn a couple of first couple of pages of the book we will come to know on the very first page we will come to know about this the follows shall show despite this loss the novel ends with core of this novel santiago also represents hemingway himself in some ways the another character is a monoline the second character it is very simple novel even even a 10th class student can read it language is very 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 simple one length is within the reach of each and every student and plot is is also very simple 
but the message the book is in order to with is very grand monolin is santiago's only young friend or you may call him the companion in fact he is an apprentice with him santiago thought until his parents objected to santiago's bad luck as since many days he was not able to catch any fish monolin still helps santiago pull in his boat in the evening and provides the this old santiago with the fruits and the bed or the other stuff when he needs it monolin is you may call the readers surrogate in the novel appreciating santiago's heroic spirit and skill despite his outward lack of success and the third character is the marlin the fish the big fish the marlin is a fish santiago spends the majority of the novel touching killing and attempting to bring to shore santiago idolizes the marlin marlin aspiring to it the traits of great nobility a fish to which he must prove his own nobility if he is to be worthy to catch it and if you we say the sea too plays very dominant role in the novel as its title suggests the sea is the central at the central in the novel most of the story takes place on the sea except the beginning of the novel on the shore of that village and the end of the novel there are also some minor characters like uh, martin the owner of the terrace rogelio a man of the village who on occasion helps santiago with the fishing net the uh, peris the man at the bodega who gives santiago newspaper to read and so on who seldom appears on the scene and they are not so significant the whole story line relow you all surround major Three or four, if we include, say, as a fourth character, Santiago, Manolin, Marley, and the sea. What is the storyline? I would like to, uh, after after putting me for you its plot and the story uh, in a nutshell, I will show you few of the video clips through my presentation in order to uh, that you will easily comprehend uh, this novel and what is there uh, that. It is instrumental to fetch Nobel Prize, world's greatest, the second to none, uh, literary prize, because in the note of that prize it is written, though they, it is mentioned the old man and sea. It is clearly mentioned. As the novel opens, at the first page we see. At the first page we see. Santiago and old fisherman has gone eighty-four days without catching a fish. It is informed to the reader. Eighty-four days without catching a fish, blank days. For the first forty days, including out of this eighty-four days, for the first forty days, the Manolin, the second character which I have introduced to you, named like boy, fished with him. He was with him as a companion, as a apprentice. He used to learn from him. But Manolin's parents, who called Santiago "salaud," the meaning the worst from form of unlucky man, forced the Manolin to leave him in order to work in a more prosperous boat with prosperous or successful fishermen. As for the last. Many days, he is unable to catch any fish, and it is a matter of his livelihood also. Manolin and his parents. The old man does not mind it. Santiago and Manolin reminisces over about the many years that the two of them fished together. And Santiago announces his before leaving. As Manolin was leaving, Santiago announces his plan to go far out in the sea the very next day, following day. As Santiago sets out on the eighty-fifth day, 
we the reader witnesses the qualities that earn him monolin's praise and dedication the old man is an expert seaman able to read the sea able to understand every things of the sea the sky and their respective creatures the flying fish for instance signal the arrival of dolphins while in santiago's experience the magnificent tug on the line can mean only one thing a marlin a bigger fish a type of large game fish that weighs around hundreds of pounds unlike the fisherman he passes on his way into the deep waters of the gulf santiago exercises an unparalleled position when fishing he keeps his lines perfectly straight instead of letting them dip as the other fishermen do which means that he always knows exactly how deep they are and what would be the next move santiago santiago focus focuses his his strength and resolves in the face of tremendous obstacles as well as the sheer artistry with which he executes his task mark him or make him as a hero what happened on 85th day that is matter that is subject matter that is substance that is everything of this novel on the 85th day when he reaches at a heavy distance on a deep sea the marlin wakes santiago by jerking the line the fish jumps out of the water again and again and santiago is thrown into the bow of the skips face down in his dolphin mate the line feels out fast and santiago the old man breaks against it with his back and hand his left hand especially is badly cut by his fight against marley santiago wishes that the boy can be thin to wet the coils of the line which would lessen the friction he longs monolin who left him Twenty five days back, as from his apprenticeship, and he is alone now. And the boat is relatively very small, and he is old man. Nobody is there to help him. One man show, one man battle is going on with Marlin, the huge one of the hugest fishes of the. Ocean. The old man wipes the crushed dolphin meat off his face, fearing that it will make him nauseated and he will lose his strength. Looking at his damaged hand, wounded hand, with the cuts thereon, he repairs that, and that is very very favorite. Uh, what you call uh, the dialogue or the sentence therein. A pain doesn't matter to a man. Well, I know I I am hundred percent sure that Anuja ma'am must have read this novel, as it must have prescribed to any of the year of her use or PG. Chandra Shekhar must have read it. Doctor Bandari must have read it, and they must have uh, uh, recalled now those days when uh, professor was. Uh, any professor teaching this novel the core dialogue of this novel core dialogue what the pain doesn't matter to a man he replies that a pain doesn't matter to a man he is the second flying fish in hope of building up his strength as the sun rises the marlin begin to circle For hours, the old man fights 
the circling fish for every inch of line, slowly pulling it in. He feels pant and dizzy and sees black spot before his eyes. He's fatigued now in his struggle. The fish riots against the line, battering the boat with its spear. When it passes under the boat, Santiago cannot believe its sights. As the marine continue to circle, Santiago adds enough pressure to the line to bring the fish closer and closer to the skip. The old man, the Santiago, thinks that the fish is killing him. Instead, he is killing fish. And admires for him. Admires for his saying, I do not care who kills who. It is also one of the very, very most quoted dialogues from this novel. Eventually, he pulls the fish onto its side by the boat and plunges his harpoon into it. When it falls back into the water, its blood strains the webs. The old man, the Santiago, pulls the skip up alongside the fish and fastens the fish to the side of the boat, tied with the rope. He thinks about how much money he will be able to make from such a big fish. And imagine that the rest fishermen and the people of the shore would be proud of him. An hour later, what happened? A shark arrives, having smelled the marlin's blood that is mingled in the water and spread through the webs. When the shark hits the marlin, the old man sinks his harpoon into the shark's head. The shark lashes on the water and eventually sinks, taking the harpoon and the old man's rope with it. Look here. That shark, two, two of the weapons very, very important weapons of Santiago, one is harpoon. That stuck fixed eye in his head and the rope. Now, Santiago, this old man, has no other weapon. The shark lashes on the water and eventually sinks, taking the harpoon and his rope. The shark has taken nearly 40 pounds of meat of marlin along with him. So, fresh blood from the marlin spills into the water, inevitably drawing more sharks to attack. And now, other sharks arrived to eat the flesh of marlin, the remaining flesh of the marlin. Santiago realizes that his struggle with the marlin was for nothing. Why? All will soon be lost. But he muses. And there is one dialogue, which is also equally very, very important, most quotable quotes. A man can be destroyed, but not defeated. Very, very favorite dialogue. As a, a pain doesn't matter to a man. Like this, a man can be destroyed, but not defeated. And he tries to be hopeful, thinking that it is a silly, if not sinful, to stop hoping. It is one of the, these, these are very, very uh, important uh, things or the messages to think on, to ponder on it. Never be hopeless. Go on hoping. Keep on hoping. He reminds himself that he didn't kill the marlin simply for food. That he killed it out of pride and love. That is important. Not only to earn money, but to earn 
the lost name and fame as since 84 days he was not able to catch any fish he has killed marley not for the food or the money but for about killing because he did it in self defense and part of his duty part of his aspiration part of his livelihood he did that he decided that everything kills everything else in some way that the jive uh, as the geographical that magazine jive jive tam uh, uh, like this and santiago uh, to to after some hours a couple of hours later a pair of more powerful sharks arrive there they attack and santiago fights then with a knife now he has no harpoon he has no rope one small knife left with him and he is fighting with this knife with a pair of big sharks who came there in order to eat the flesh of the dead marley he has lashed a is a knife to an oar as a makeshift weapon he enjoyed killing the shark because it was a worthy opponent a mighty and fearless predator but he has nothing but disdain for the scavenging this sawel knife the shark spear the old man kills both of them both this pair of sharks but not before they take a good quarter of the marley means the rest one quarter part of the flesh of marley they took away they have eaten or it must have washed in the deep water again santiago wishes that he hadn't killed the marlin because nothing no flesh left with the marlin's body which is tied side by of the boat he apologizes to the dead marlin for having gone out so far because he went deep in the sea the far distance from the shore alone in a small boat with minimum weapons he has no food to eat therein another means one more shark arrives again santiago kills it but what happened here look the tragedy and fight look the dynamics of battle of santiago at this time he loses his knife in this process the knife stuck a dirt to the shark and he lost his knife now he has no harpoon no rope no knife just before night fall few more sharks approaches there the old man's arsenal has been reduced to the club he used to kill bite fish he managed a club the shark into it take but not before the remains when the last shark tries to tear at the top head of the marlin the last remaining particle of the marlin the old man club the shark until the tiller splinters he used that bite a very small weapon here he plunges the sharp edge into the shark's flesh and the beast let's go no meat is left now on the marlin when he reaches the harbor the shore all lights are out and no one is there he notices the, the skeleton of the fish still tied 
to the skip the side by part of the boat. He down the mast and begins to soldier it up the hill to his sack. The fantastic, the final stage of the old man's fight with the fish brings two thematic issues, important issues to the fore. The first concerns man's place in nature. The second concerns nature itself. It is possible to interpret Santiago's journey as a cautionary tale of sorts, a tragic lesson about what happens when man's pride forces him beyond the boundaries of his rightful human place in the world. At one point, Santiago embraces his unity and the Marlin thinking, you are killing me, fish, but you have a right to, brother, come on and kill me. I do not care who kills who. This realization speaks to the novel, novel's theory of the natural world. As Santiago's exhausting and near endless battle with the Marlin shows, his is a world in which life and death go hand in loving hand. Everything in the world must die. And according to Santiago, only a brotherhood between men or creatures can alleviate the grimness of that fact. Early next morning, what happened? Monorin comes to the old man's sack and the sight of his friend's rabid hands brings him to tears. Fishermen have gathered around Santiago's boat and measured the carcass of that marlin at 18 feet means that marlin was having 18 feet in, so big 18 feet not joke and he caught it with small and minimum weapons on a small boat Santiago said that the sharks beat him and monolin insist that he will work with the old man again, regardless of what his parents say. How Manulin is ready to leave that fisherman with whom his parents sent him to be apprenticed there. The old man and the sea ends on a rather optimistic note. Santiago is reunited with monolin that is human relationship the human ties who desperately wants to complete his training all of the old man's noble qualities and more important the lessons he draws from his experience will be passed on to the boy which means the fisherman's life will continue on in some form even after his death the novel states as much when Santiago replied that, which I would like to repeat, a man can be destroyed but not defeated. The destruction of a Marlin is not a defeat for Santiago, rather it leads to his redemption. Indeed, the fishermen who once mocked him now stands in awe and inspiration of him. Because no fisherman of that shore was able to catch such types of 18 feet marlin till now, till that day. Monolin, that's why Monolin rightly said about Santiago, there are many good fishermen and some great ones, but there is only you, Santiago. You are the only one, second to none. When Santiago says, fishing kills me exactly as it keeps me alive, he is pointing once again to the vast necessary and even shifting tension that exists between loss and gain, triumph and defeat, life and death. In the final pages of the novel, Hemingway employs a number of images that link Santiago to Jesus Christ, the model of transcendence, who turned loss into gain, defeat into triumph, and even death into new life, new coming. Hemingway 
unbesedly pends the old man as a crucified martyr even the position in which he collapses on the on his bed i will show in video uh, there is one scene of this uh, uh, there is one uh, screenshot of this scene he slips face down on the newspapers and his arms out straight and the palms of his hands up brings to mind the image of his suffering on the cross there are number of the quotes that i would like uh, to but i think that instead of this uh, i would like to go to the uh, slide show in which uh, some of the good clips four five three minutes tips uh, i have downloaded in order to show you uh, only the, the the those earlier uh, these are very very important quotes it is silly not to hope etc the battle between the old man and the fish is more than a trial of strength it is also a battle of wills and will powers both means marlin as well as santiago were determined to win and we see that the old man is willing to endure to defeat the fish they are separated from the rest of the world on the wide sea and their battle is now central to their existence the old man is physically very small to compare marley and weak but he defeats the marlin 18 feet fish because of his will power and this will power strong will power man can be destroyed but not that stands at the core of this novel he is willing to endure and what was the vitamin with him that is powerful will power will power unsackable will power when the sharks attack and eat the marlin the old man kills or fights them up one by one despite losing all weapons with each confrontation until he has nothing left but his bare fists means he got to the share only skeleton of marlin hemingway's life certainly infused the this writing of old man and sea the similarity between santiago and hemingway somehow are accepted by most of the critics both of them were struggling hemingway had not written a successful novel during last 10 years and santiago had not caught a fish in last 84 days and this killing of the marlin that is this this what you call this this uh, success made him hemingway one of the celebrities of the world as the this catch made santiago the hero of the hero in the fisherman therefore they both proved themselves against adversity what i think that it is a good example of a text that tells a simple story very simple story in minimal pages with only three four characters in all but there in that allows you and me like readers readers to find whatever meaning you or me or he or she likes in it as it is said by plato that books give a soul to the universe wings to the mind fight to the imagination and life to everything this book will give wings to imagination your imagination i'm sure about it now uh, it is over to you thank you yes yes sir thank you thank you okay yes pratima thank you so much sir thank you for sharing your expertise the way you narrated the book 
no one left any doubt over it is there any question to anyone so i guess there is nothing your presentation drew us and uh, held our attention uh, there was never a dull moment so we all are so grateful for this wonderful session thank you so much sir now we will directly come to the conclusion as our principals and hod ma'am are not available for this session uh, they are busy in one of the meeting of our college so i request ms kushi dudhani to good afternoon to all it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks uh, for this event to all the dignitaries assembled here uh, firstly i would like to thank principal sir for giving us permission to conduct this program also uh, i'd like to give a special thanks to our today's resource person dr arvind nable sir for being a part of this program knowing a book lecture series and to share with us about one of the most famous books written the old man and the sea by ernest hemingway thank you sir for giving your valuable time i also would like to thank uh, hod ma'am of uh, english department dr anuja jadhav ma'am and uh, all the members of the department as well as thank you all the students my dear friends for patiently attending the event thank you okay thank you all the best to you i am leaving thank you thank you very much sir if 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 any technical lacuna sir uh, thank you very much was, i apologize for it as uh, first time i am using microsoft uh, uh, team no, sir, before that it was the 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 soft talk i have given on the zoom or the google meet or the kisco okay yes yes thank you all the best to all the faculty and students namaste thank you thank you very much sir thank you okay. thank you very much thank you sir share me recording on my mail okay then later on yes sir yes youtube link is shared sir yes